What's up, ZPAC? We're back. The anti-vaxxers tried to shut us down by killing our audio, so we're starting fresh. Today, we're really excited. I want you to hit share right now because we're going to save lives with this cast. We're going to talk about flu, the myths around the current epidemic, whether you should get a shot, what's the deal with antivirals, and is the flu going to kill you this year? We're going to debunk a crazy, quacky chiropractor who's telling people, John Bergman, Dr. John Bergman, who's telling people on Facebook to the tune of 2 million views not to vaccinate and to not take Tylenol and to just, uh, you know, take vitamins and your body will heal itself from flu because people don't die from the flu. This is dangerous quackery and we're going to stick it in his vape hole, okay? Now, first of all, I want to tell you guys this particular podcast um, yeah, Christy Jackson, we got sound now, son. Suck it, anti-vaxxers. This podcast, we are partnering with Audible. Audible, which has the an unmatched selection of audiobooks, comedy shows, news. Uh, I use it myself to acquire my content auditorially. And they are partnering with us to offer Z Packers a special deal. You get a free audiobook with a 30-day trial. And all you have to do is go to www.audible.com forward slash Z D O G G M D Z Dog M D two G's because one is necessary but not sufficient to be a gangsta. If you go to www.audible.com forward slash Z Dog M D, you will get a free audiobook if you sign up for a 30 day trial. Now, I myself consume my books this way at double speed so that I can get it quickly, get the key points, and uh, consume it when I'm on a treadmill or on a stairmaster or whatever. The book that I'm recommending you guys read that relates to this show about flu is Daniel Kahneman, who's a Nobel Prize economics winner, a psychologist, studies um, the mind, happiness, and our biases. His book is called Thinking Fast and Slow. It was released in 2011, and it is effectively a discussion about why we're so biased, why our decision-making and our intuition is wrong, why we're evolutionarily hardwired to believe quacks like Dr. John Bergman about flu, because it fits our lazy intuition, our elephant, if you will, what, what uh, Daniel Kahneman calls system one, our earliest thinking that's instinctive, unconscious, is based on pattern recognition, disgust, and acts with a rule of thumb kind of mindset, versus our little writer on top that is system two in his thinking, which is slow, deliberate thinking, logic, planning, and thinking things out. And that's why the scientists who study flu, who study vaccines, who study immunology, have spent a lifetime using system two, slow, deliberate, effective thinking, as opposed to quackapractors like Dr. John Bergman and, and doctors, actual medical doctors like Suzanne Humphreys, uh, complete quacks who appeal to the elephant and say, don't trust the experts. They don't know what they're doing. Daniel Kahneman's book, Thinking Fast and Slow, tells you why you better trust the experts because our intuition is very often wrong when it comes to truths about the universe around us, especially medicine. So thanks to Audible um, for co-sponsoring this show. Now, and I'll repeat that information at the end. Here's what I wanna talk about flu. The video circulating around by Dr. Doctor, and I put this in quotes because he's a chiropractor. Now I wanna specify this. I know chiropractors and have worked with chiropractors that are evidence-based, that stick into the scope of what they do really well, the musculoskeletal stuff, and they partner with the um, allopathic physicians to care for patients. They would never think about giving flu advice to a patient beyond go see your doctor, get a flu vaccine, and if you get sick, go see the doctor under certain circumstances. That is the correct advice. Why would you take flu advice? This guy put out a video saying the flu vaccine is only 10% effective. It's created with carcinogens. In other words, he says it this way. Uh, there are cancer-causing agents in vaccines made from fetal, aborted fetal tissues. Okay, the usual anti-vax stuff. And you go to his website, all right? Also, he says nobody dies of flu. He says that's a lie. Okay. I'm a doctor on the front lines. We see people die of flu every day. I have a Z-pack of 780,000 people. They message me daily that they are seeing people sick and dying of flu. I have had my own young patients die of flu in the ICU. And so this is real. So when you hear a chiropractor like that telling you anything about flu, do not listen. Go to his website. He's got a picture of him and an infant talking about how he just manipulated this child in chiropractic because, quote, he's healthy and unvaccinated. Okay, 
That needs to stop. So people who've shared that video with me, it's crap. Share this video with your friends who've shared that with you because we're gonna talk about the truth about flu. We're not gonna cause panic, we're not fear-mongering, we're gonna tell you the truth. And this is what the truth is. First of all, is this year a flu any worse than other years? Are we really in a flu epidemic? The answer, every year is a flu epidemic because every year we have a huge surge in flu during flu season from roughly October till around February or March, depending on the length of the season. This year is no exception. Now we've had years where it was a pandemic around the world, like the swine flu years, etc. This is an epidemic. Why is this year worse than recent years? Because for the first time in 13 years, the CDC has said we have widespread flu in all 50 states. So it's surged up very rapidly. The second reason this year is a little worse than average is that this predominantly circulating flu virus is the H3N2 variant of flu. There are many different types of flu. This is an influenza A, H3N2, and I'm not gonna get into details of what that means because it's not important to you. What's important is to understand that when H3N2 first emerged in 1968 in Hong Kong, it killed a million people around the world. Okay, now, and first of all, now you've got this uh, quack Bergman telling you not to vaccinate because flu is harmless. Okay, already you just gotta not listen to this guy. But since that time, H3N2 has been circulating. People have developed immunity, there have been vaccinations, and so it's less fatal now, but it is still a little more dangerous, causes a little more hospitalization, a little more death than your garden variety flu. So that being said, that already makes it a little worse. Now, the question is, are we seeing a lot more hospitalizations, et cetera? Yes, it depends on where you are. Some hospitals have tents out in the, you know, in Southern California, out in the, in the lobby and in the parking lot to triage because it's so overwhelming. That combined with the shortage of IV fluids due to the Puerto Rico disaster hurricane, it's a struggle. So those of us who work in the hospital see this on the ground. What the heck is John Bergman and Suzanne Humphreys doing sitting in his office in, in Huntington Beach? If you look at his website, he's got a picture of him on a yacht with some chick. That is not the guy you listen to. You listen to the crazy bald man who suffered on the front lines and who studies this and who believes the experts who make a living and a purpose in their life researching this stuff. This is what they do. Okay, this idea that we don't trust our experts is insane. Daniel Kahneman, Thinking Fast and Slow, our partnership with Audible in this episode, you can go to audible.com forward slash ZDOGGMD and actually get a free audiobook. I suggest that one with a 30 day trial because it will tell you why your thinking is often wrong and how to recognize poor thinking, how to think better. That's the key thing. All right, back to the flu. So the, um, the question of this year being particularly bad, well, there it is. And now you have a lot of people in the hospital, a lot of frontline um, uh, 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 providers saying that this is a serious problem. So the question is, should you be worried? Well, if you're a normal, healthy person, usually if you get flu, it's not a disaster. However, for some people, they do get very sick and they die, even if they're young and don't have any other diagnosed problems. I have had this happen to patients of mine that are young. And the way you die of flu is that, most commonly, you either have an inflammatory response in your lungs, presumably due to the virus itself, and that can trigger a cascade of things and sepsis, and we talked about this on another show, uh, and death from ARDS, respiratory distress, etc. That's one way you can die. The second way you can die is you can get weakened from the virus and that makes you prone to getting a bacterial or other viral pneumonia, infection of the lungs, and that can kill you. And wh who does it happen to? It can happen to healthy people, but the title of this video is, Will, you know, is the flu gonna kill you this year? Not so likely if you're healthy, but much more likely if you're young or very old or you have immune compromise in the form of asthma, diabetes, heart disease, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, uh, you know, lupus, you're on immuno, in, immunosuppressives, you've had an organ transplant. This is, these are the people who die. We're talking about children, we're talking about our children, okay? Now, you, as a healthy person, if you 
if you don't get vaccinated, if you don't take steps to avoid flu, hand washing, staying home when you're sick, you are going to put these young people, old people, and people with immunocompromise and chronic disease at risk of death. You are going to be an accomplice to murder. If that doesn't affect your elephant, I don't know what will. So the question is, should you still get vaccinated? Even though, now people like Berkman are saying it's a 10% of efficacy this year. Lie. That's just a lie. What he's doing is showing his cognitive bias. He's taking data from Australia, which is a different continent. Okay, the H3N2 is circulating there. They had a poor match with the virus and the vaccine, but also it's different because in Australia, they only advocate immunizing the very young and the very old and the, and the sick. So people who are at high risk. So it's a totally different population they're immunizing. In the United States, we recommend immunization for everyone. Why? Because young people can die a few, healthy people can die of flu, but also because you get something called herd immunity, community immunity when you vaccinate a bunch of people. Even if the vaccine isn't a perfect match for the virus, you lower your chances still because you develop some immunity. You lower your chances of getting that infection. But more importantly, when you get the infection, there is data to show that you are less likely to die or have severe complications if you have been vaccinated. So even if it isn't a perfect match for the H3N2 that's circulating, you should still get vaccinated to try to avoid dying or shedding virus. What's another reason you should still get vaccinated? And is it too late, by the way? No, it takes about two weeks for the virus, for the, for the um, vaccine to kick in. So you have two weeks before it really kicks in. That's why they say get it in October, but it's not too late because flu season isn't going to be over till you know, March, maybe even later. So get it now. But the other reason is it covers three to four strains depending on the flu vaccine you get, the quadrivalent or the tetravalent. So it turns out 78% of the circulating flu right now, according to CDC, is H3N2, which isn't a perfect match for our current vaccine. However, what about the other 22%, right? So you could be covered with that vaccine that covers those other strains. Also, the vaccine covers influenza B, which typically hits later in the year. So you could theoretically get flu twice from two different strains. Get the damn vaccine. The side effects are minimal. Daniel Kahneman in his book talks about the bias we have called availability bias. When you look on Facebook and you see somebody with a reported vaccine side effect, which is usually bogus, has nothing to do with the vaccine, but let's say it does, you're gonna remember that and think, oh, overestimate your chances of having that happen. They are infinitesimally, infinitesimally small compared to your chance of actually getting sick, making someone sick, or dying from flu. Simple as that. But our brains don't process statistics that way because we work on intuition first. That's system one. System two then goes back and slowly deliberates. The problem is, according to Kahneman, system two gets tired. It doesn't like to work. It likes to let system one handle it. it the writer likes to let the elephant win because that way it doesn't have to do work. That's how it's designed. It takes a lot of ATP to think. So it's going to take the easy route and believe a douchebag like Bergman, who's a dangerous quack, and then people are going to die. That's how we're wired, people. That's why we're doing this show. All right, anyways, before I get really angry and upset, um, so you should absolutely get vaccinated. Here's the kicker. The CDC studied it one year. 90% of the children who died of flu in the year they studied it were unvaccinated. Now, correlation does not mean causation, but just put that in the pipe of these assholes who are telling you not to vaccinate your children, okay? Do you want them to be at risk for death? That's the question I would ask them. This chiropractor is the same guy who's <coughs> cracking the neck of infants and babies on his website. You're gonna trust a guy? You're gonna share that with me and go, what do you think, Z-Dog? I'm gonna tell you what I think right now. It's cray-cray. All right, that being said, how do you know, and a lot of people go, I got the flu shot, and like, I immediately got the flu. Okay, first of all, flu shot can't give you flu, dummy. And the reason it can't is it's killed inactivated viral antigens. Second, you either didn't get the flu, you had a cold, because that happens this time of year, or you actually got the flu, because it didn't have time to kick in. It takes two weeks to kick in. 
So that's why you got the flu. The flu shot doesn't give you the flu. It can give you redness, it can give you a short-term fever, it can give you some muscle aches, that's it. Now, how do you tell the difference between a flu and a cold? People ask this all the time. Every year, you're, you're wondering, what it, blah, blah, blah. First of all, it doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter, and I'll tell you why in a second. But if you actually care, more often, colds are associated with a cough. More often, flus are associated with a fever. More often, flus come on very quickly and colds a little slower. This is not a hard and fast rule, and there's plenty of crossover. You can't tell. This is why it doesn't matter. Most often, you are just going to get better. If you rest, drink plenty of fluids, don't go to work, don't cough on people, wash your hands. If you're going out, wear a mask. Simple as that. So it doesn't matter whether you have a cold or a flu. Here's when it matters. Here's when you go to see the doctor, okay? Flag this part right now. If you are confused or your family thinks you're confused, not thinking clearly, red flag, red flag, altered mental status, go right to the doctor or the ER. Do not pass go because that could mean early sepsis. It could mean advanced flu. It could mean super infection. It could mean a lot of terrible things. Go. Don't screw around, especially if you're elderly or very young, okay? In other words, you're high risk. Number next, if you're having trouble keeping down fluids, so you're vomiting, you're unable to drink, you, you get up and you're lightheaded, you're dizzy, you're dizzy when you're sitting down, you are dehydrated, or your blood pressure is low due to early sepsis, inflammatory response due to infection, ARDS, etc. Do not pass go, go to the doctor, all right? Third, you can't breathe. You're having trouble breathing. And I don't care if you have underlying disease or not. If that happens in the setting of these other symptoms, go to the doctor or the emergency department. Otherwise, you have a fever, you're coughing, you have muscle aches, you feel crappy, you have a headache. Usually, you can manage it at home. You don't have to go and cough in a doctor's office. You can call if you want, but please don't clog up the emergency room if you don't have to with that stuff making other people sick. I told you the alarm symptoms, right? If you're ever in doubt, call your doctor. By the way, this isn't medical advice. This is edutainment. Call your doctor, okay? So those are the sort of alarm signs. Now, um, one of the questions uh, that, that people often ask is, you know, when is the flu season going to end? Usually it's around March, plus or minus, depending. But flu really is kind of year-long in some places. It's just that in the winter, people are closer together. The temperature is cold. There's some theory that flu is a little more stable in cold temperatures. That kind of people are packed in. So in the northern hemisphere, it's in winter. In the southern hemisphere, it's in summer, the, the predominance of the flu season. Antivirals, Tamiflu, Relenza, you know, Rapabap or whatever the heck it is, those drugs are generally useful for patients who are very sick, young, old, hospitalized, or at risk, have risk factors, you know, COPD, diabetes, heart disease, immune compromise, et cetera. In those cases, you need to start it early, and there's evidence that it shortens the severity and the duration of symptoms, and there is some observational evidence that it actually reduces complications of influenza. Do I think everyone who has flu symptoms should be put on Tamiflu? No. And that is, this is where like, you know, the the quacks will say, see dog, you're in the pocket of big pharma, you bald asshole. And I'm like, I may be a bald asshole, but I have not gotten a dime from big pharma to promote any of this shit. And you can look at that on the Sunshine Act page. I say actually less is more when it comes to medication. You can take some Tylenol, you can take some Motrin if you like, talk to your doctor if you need to. Tamiflu for sick patients, um, like I said, people at risk. Otherwise, rest, fluid, etc. Vitamins and all that, it's mostly bullshit. It's just a placebo. If you like placebos, go ahead, all right? And then go see a cool chiropractor who's friendly with his allopathic physician who can help with the back pain that you have from hunched over your computer Googling flu and am I gonna die? That is the way to roll, son. Okay, what else? I'm gonna read a couple quick comments and then we're gonna wrap this up old school. Um, thank you for the edutainment, Trudy. Thank you. Just to, uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. Ooh, um, Lisa Jett just recovering from B flu and strep. That's no good. Uh, and remember, people can get the vaccination and still get sick, but it might shorten the duration. You might be less likely to die. 
So it's still important to get the flu shot. It's not perfect. No one's saying it is. At Turntable Health, my clinic, we used to give it for free. We would cover the cost. That's how much we believed in flu shot. Okay, you think we're profiting on that? Hell to the no. We were profiting on wellness. Um, so Tracy Atkins says, I had four positive flus in the summer and a couple of years ago. Yeah, the summer a few years ago was pretty bad. It's pretty bad. So that being said, I think I want to wrap it up by saying, listen, we're really glad Audible uh, was able to partner with us for this show and help sponsor this show and give you guys a special offer. Thir with a 30-day trial, they'll give you a free audiobook. I recommend Daniel Kahneman's Thinking Fast and Slow so that you can teach people, including yourself, about our biases, our heuristics that are false, our quick unconscious reasoning that we need to override with slow, deliberate thinking and reasoning. And we need to actually trust some of our experts that do the slow, deliberate reasoning, but question things, that's fine. But actually don't trust somebody who is a moron, a.k.a. Dr. John Bergman. And yes, I just committed an ad hominem. Tough. Uh, deal with it. You got a yacht and a girlfriend, okay? I have an office and a phone and a wife and beautiful children. But that's neither here nor there. No yacht, though. I'm working on that. The SS Tammy flu. Uh, last thing, go to www.audible.com forward slash Z-D-O-G-G-M-D. The link is in the comments, ZDogMD and get your free audiobook with a 30-day trial. I really want to thank Audible. I use it myself. Um, I'm a big fan. Tom uses it. Logan uses it. We listen to hella books. I recommend you do that too. Educate your brain, son. Educate! Also, hit share. Please share this with people. This needs to go, no pun intended, viral.